Hello everyone, my name is Katie Obi 10 and welcome to week 4's commentary for Dancing with the Stars Season 21. Oh my god, there's just been a lot of emotions this week. I don't even know where to begin. So, let's just start from the past weekend. Whitney Carson got engaged to her boyfriend of four years, Carson McAllister. Congratulations, Whitney and Carson. I am so happy for the both of you. Beyond thrilled. And have you guys seen her engagement ring? Oh my god, that man is good at jewelry picking. Dude. If I ever find a man and he wants to propose to me, can you help him out? And then on Sunday, it was announced on Twitter that Tom Bergeron would not be hosting Monday's show due to a family emergency. His father was dying. So season 19 winner Alfonso Ribeiro was going to fill in for him. Tom, I wish you all the love and comfort during this difficult time. And Alfonso, thank you for being there for our family, our Dance with the Stars family, and the community. We really appreciate you. And then on Monday's live show, Allison Holker, with her husband Twitch, and her daughter Wesley, announced that she is four months pregnant! What the hell?! How is this woman looking four months pregnant and still competing on this show?! This is crazy! But I am so happy for her and Twitch. This is wonderful news. Congratulations to the both of you. This week, I'm not going to focus on the negativity. I am just going to focus on the positivities, the dances that really stuck out for me, the ones that are just pulling me in, tugging my heartstrings, and being like, yes, yes, this is all the love and warmth and... Everything with cottage cheese. No, that's not what I want to say, but I think you guys kind of get what I'm saying here. But I will say this. I will say the following. Tamar is still looking like she is guarding her walls. She will not let her walls come down at all, and it's frustrating. It pisses me off. Hayes' contemporary was pretty good, but I don't think it was nine worthy. I'm sorry. I may be the only one that still thinks that Hayes Greer has a lot way to go before he is nine worthy in my standpoint. And oh, Gary Busey, you really tried. You tried your hardest, honey. But oh, this was just... This is... I don't... Is there a word to describe what I feel? I, I quit. I just quit. But enough with all the negatives. Let's focus on the positives and focus on who really stuck out for me this week. Let's start with the Pena Vegas. Alexa, you really let me down this week. Oh my gosh. I, I enjoyed the concept of her celebrating her mother and her sisters. But <sighs> it was just slow I don't know. It didn't pick up any sort of pace for me. And, oh, she stumbled at the end. Alexa, oh, honey, you really let me down, babe. Carlos. Carlos. I am not a religious person by any means, everyone. Let's just get that right off the bat. This was a beautiful testimony of turning over a new leaf. And then he said in his package, like, he went to the church on Sunday, and then on a Thursday, the same week, he meets Alexa for the first time. Oh my goodness, that just blew me away, and oh. Carlos won me over this week, everyone. His flow, his lines... The story, the elegance. Yeah, Carlos definitely beat Alexa this week. Oh, Alec. My heart goes out to you. If y'all didn't watch the show last night, Alec is connected to the organ shootings 
because that was his college. And that's just, oh my god, that's a lot to handle. I mean, this guy stopped a terrorist on a train and now his college got shot. It, my god, this guy, he is the strongest person I have probably ever seen on this show in the longest time. And while I like, not like, I love the concept, I loved how he's just inspiring, he looked so out of it, it just felt like his heart wasn't in the moment. That he just wanted to be more where his hometown is, being with his family and all that, than to be here on the show. And God bless Alec. Let's all just pray for him, pray for Oregon, all that. Let's just do that. Andy is starting to grow, and is starting to have more momentum, and he is starting to become more memorable for people. This was a great routine, and this song, his new song, kicks so much ass! I loved every moment of this number. And can we all just acknowledge, again, that Allison Holker is four months pregnant. Holy shit, this is... I don't know if there are words to describe how I feel about Allison being four months pregnant and still being able to compete on the show. This is incredible. Nick Carter, thank you for making me relive my childhood, my nostalgia. I am... I am fangirling... I'm still crying eternally on the inside. This was a thank you piece to the band, to the fans. This was wonderful. Thank you so much, Nick. And I'm pretty sure I wish I was Sharna. I think every girl wants to be Sharna. But Sharna, girlfriend, you got to live the ultimate dream. That had to be such a... An amazing experience. Nick's story really touched me. Basically, I wouldn't know what to do if I was in his shoes. Being part of a bad neighborhood. Either your friends are dead or in jail. And music was his only escape. I don't think anybody can understand what goes through your mind and how to survive in those troubled times. But Nick managed to do it. He managed to get out of there, and he is okay. I am grateful for him to stick with the Backstreet Boys, to be part of the Backstreet Boys. I am forever grateful for everything. I wish I could say more. I would probably go on a 12-hour essay on how amazing this was. And now we have come to Bindi Irwin. I am going to do my best to keep my emotions inside for this one. But if I start crying, please forgive me. Oh my gosh. Where to begin? This piece, this contemporary, this is something that is going to be remembered by people for a long time. Even when the show is forever gone, like there is no more Dance with the Stars, I think people are going to remember this. This was a wonderful tribute from a loving daughter to her precious father. I don't know how she manages to stay strong for everything that she has went through the past nine years. Steve Irwin, I grew up watching him. And he was so incredible, and he loved life and lived it to the fullest. He was so incredible. Such an amazing man. A remarkable man. And when I found out that he died, I was devastated. And I felt so bad for Terry, and for Bindi, and for Robert. I couldn't imagine the hurt and the pain that they were going through, that they are still going through. I lost my dad when I was very, very young. I wasn't even two years old yet 
my dad was killed by a train. So I know how Bindi feels about not having her dad around. But growing up, I had my dad's mother, my grandmother. She was the living existence, the living piece of my father. She was a wonderful woman, and I wish more people could have known how remarkable my grandmother was. Maybe about in 2000... Four, I would say. She got diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, and I really didn't know what it was. And it's something that makes you lose your mobility, that makes you lose your speech. And to see her so weak and everything, it broke my heart, and I couldn't stand to see her in that much pain. And then, two weeks after Steve Irwin was killed, I got done with school, and I was enjoying my day, and I get a phone call, my grandmother was dying, and I rushed to that nursing home, <laughs> and she looked at me in the eyes, and there was fear that she didn't want to leave. And I told her it was okay to go. And I felt emotionally connected to everything that Bendy went through. <laughs> it's like Terry said in the video package. You lose a piece of your heart when someone very close to you dies. Next week is the Switch Up Challenge. I don't know if I want to do a commentary about it. Just leave it down below if you want me to. I, f I don't know. I, I'm debating. But if you want me to, just let me know. I'll do it for you guys. Because I love you guys. You're my internet friends. And Maxim Schmierkowski is going to be guest judging. Got mixed feelings about this. I love him, but I think he's going to favor some people. I don't know. There's just something about this idea that is just going to turn into a disaster. Especially with him being a guest judge and Julianne already being a permanent judge. Th I just think it's just going to end horribly. But let's see what happens next week. And if Bindi gets Val, I am going to kill someone. But I will see you guys either next week or in two weeks. You be the judge, I don't care. Just take care, guys. Take care. You know, burping is good. And it's really good because you're relieving yourself of a sodium that doesn't belong to you.